Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. We're in Mountain View, California, at Atlantis Computing's headquarters. We're talking to Seth Knox. He's the uh, Vice President of Product. Seth, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Seth, you know, when I talk to people, a lot of big topic is converge, hyperconverge. Everybody's kind of trying to figure out what to do with this. I know you guys clearly have a role to play in this. Can you kind of walk us through how Atlantis and USX uh, helps out the hyperconverged environment? Sure. So the Atlantis USX product is a uh, software-defined storage platform of which one of the architectures you can implement is hyperconverged. Okay. One of the things we've seen a lot of interest from customers recently is this concept of all flash hyperconverged as an alternative to buying an all flash array. Okay. So basically what we're doing is we're using some of our data services that are called Atlantis Hyperdupe data services to pool a bunch of local disk that's in servers, whatever server could be a blade server, a rack server, could be anything from PCIe flash to SSD. Okay. Um, and then layer inline deduplication and compression on top of that and expose a storage volume to applications that has the storage built into the server platform as opposed to buying external shared storage. So once again, just like it is really always the case with you guys, you're sort of agnostic to everything, right? Agnostic to server, agnostic to storage. And I, you know, I always kind of think you guys just make it all better. Is that right? Yes, exactly. So we work at the hypervisor level. So mm -hmm. anything that can be viewed as a data store on the underlying hypervisor can be pooled and aggregated by us, which spans basically everything um, you know, every form of local disk. Okay, so how does, uh, so kind of draw us to this uh, diagram you got here and what's going on? Sure, so let's start from the bottom up. Okay. Um, so you can take, you know, think about this in two ways. Either you can take existing servers where you have access, local disk or SSD available, mm -hmm. and you can pool those together. So here we have, you know, PCIe flash cards, SSD, uh, flash dims, which is a new kind of media that's very exciting. Um, and you can even do pooling of SAS or SATA drives if you want to expand your capacity beyond what's available from all flash. So I can uh, segregate between, say, high-end performance and you know cheap capacity. Exactly. Now, okay. one thing to keep in mind, though, is at the Atlantis USX level, we are doing inline deduplication, compression, and I.O. acceleration. So the PCIe flash may go a lot further than the raw capacity available from that flash, up to 10 times the amount. So you'll see that we can, you know, you may not need SAS or SATA at all. You can right. just make it all flash, as we've talked about in the title. Well, and, and we, when we talked to Chathan, your CTO, mm -hmm. he talked about how in the, in the virtual environment, we can see a, an, a, as much as a 90% return on that dedupe investment, right? So we can get a lot of capacity off yeah, this, Yeah, right? exactly. So, I mean, a PCIe flash card's kind of mid-level. You can get a terabyte PCIe flash card, which turns into 10 terabytes of usable storage once you apply inline deduplication and compression. Right, pretty good deal, okay. Yeah. Uh, so then let's talk about, uh, so from a total capacity, how much capacity can we put together in this type of world? So we uh, have developed some solution briefs and done some testing around it. Um, and one of the uh, very uh, three node configuration, which is kind of the minimum with Atlantis USX, right. can actually do these capacities over here. So you can do um, very easily do 64 terabytes of effective all flash capacity. Okay. Um, if you need more capacity than that, you can actually increase it to 300 terabytes by adding, you know, two, four, six terabyte SAS drives in alongside some of the flash. Wow. And so now that's sort of the storage level. Now these are your uh, servers here, right? Yes. Yeah, so exactly. again, commodity servers. And that's a big deal because some of the converged solutions and hyperconverged solutions force you to buy a whole new server stack. Yeah, right? exactly. So it'll work with any server that supports the hypervisor um, that you're running. So we, we sit as a series of VMs that run on those three or more nodes and present the storage to the application level as well as do the pooling and HA of all the storage uh, components. Now, can I also, I, I would assume I, that also means that I can, like this could be just for, say for example, uh, Dell, IBM, and HP. I can mix exactly. brands too? Yes, you can okay. mix brands, you can mix configurations, you can have different processors, you can have different disk configurations in each one, which is not is another thing that's not very common among appliance vendors. It's all kind of uniform, right? Here you could take three servers that you already have, have very different specs, different manufacturers, and you could pool all of the local storage across all of those and you know do it 
a retrofit implementation on an existing environment rather than buying new hardware. And that gives me a lot of flexibility, right? And also maybe some negotiation power with the vendors. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, it's a good point, and it also leverages the investment you've already made, so exactly. you're not you know, having to go back to your CFO for as much budget as you would have. So let's talk about the USX layer. That goes in at the hypervisor level, you said. So yes, let's talk exactly. about that a bit. So this, this one layer represents, it. actually when it's deployed, it's physically, um, you know, a VM on each host that has local storage. So in this particular configuration, it would be three VMs that were um, working together to present a single pool of storage and create volumes for these applications. And then in the um, and then in the other video that my colleague Eric did with Mark, uh, we talked about how those could be uh, consolidated, and you guys can deliver a, a unified a, a effect, right, and deliver different types of storage. Exactly right. So in this case, these are all local disk, right? But right. you could pool it with shared storage if you wanted to. Right. Um, you can also expose um, NFS or block storage up here or object to the applications. So you can really combine kind of anything as an input and anything as an output to the application in terms of storage protocol and connectivity. Yeah. Again, you're just nailing the whole flexibility thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what's going on up here at the at the highest level here? So here, um, one thing I wanted to highlight is you can do a wide variety of applications. I mean, we're famous for kind of VDI deployments, but we're, you know, you can do tier one apps like databases, you can do file and print, you can do backup. It can be a wide variety of things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you're doing the mix of Flash versus SATA or SAS, will be different depending on your application, right? If your objective is to get the lowest cost per gigabyte, your your SATA and SAS will be a higher Makes ratio sense. of the, the capacity. But if you're doing databases or big data or something, you can you know put in PCIe flash and we can make that more affordable and greater capacity. So let's drill in on that. You talked about running mission critical and high performance databases. You've got some performance numbers written up over yeah. here. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so basically we can deliver whatever the number of IOPS are that are necessary up to this 3.3 million IOPS on a three node configuration. Well, Obviously that's, that's an all flash configuration. It's a tremendous amount of IOPS. Just 3 million IOPS? Come yeah, on, man, jeez. I, I know. All right. And that's with a, you know, just, you know, people always ask what the configuration is. That's 50% read, 50% write, 4K. 80% um, random blocks. So, so that's a fair a, way to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then very low latency is also yes, as well. Exactly, latency obviously critical to those high performance applications. So let me throw you a curveball. What in those tests? What was the network uh, that connected these different servers? Yeah. To? So one of the requirements here is 10 gig networking. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be a dedicated 10 gig, but uh, you do need 10 gig networking because we are after the deduplication and compression happens, the unique blocks get replicated for data protection across okay. the nodes. So, I mean, all this sounds great, Seth. Let's let's kind of end with kind of what is, you know, other than performance, what's most important to most IT guys is trying to figure out a way to save money or squeeze more money out of what they got. So what are we talking about from a cost perspective? Yeah, so if you look at it from a cost perspective, relative to an alternative of all flash, mm -hmm. uh, it's about 80% lower cost per gigabyte than an all flash array, okay. even some of the optimized ones. So for example, you're talking around $2 per gigabyte of effective capacity. Um, and the cost per IOP, you know, with all those IOPs is five cents or something like that. Now, I mean, two gig is that with, that, but that's with hard drives, right? Or yeah, that's that? inclusive of the cost of the storage media and our license. Okay, great, okay. Well, I, I think that's uh, fantastic. I, you know, this uh, really drives home the point of the, the full capability of Atlanta. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So here you see it. One of the key things with converged infrastructures is flexibility. One of my concerns with a lot of converged infrastructures is that they basically drive out flexibility. What you've seen here is a highly flexible environment that delivers great performance uh, and, del and delivers a lower cost point. So something really key to look at. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.